In season two, chapter 15, Kite Where We Want Them, Safira falls to the Girolan almost immediately and is pulled back to her bow. And for a moment you feel almost suspended in air and then you're like ripped back and Safira just vanishes. The body is gone. Safira! Safira! And the first Safira, and then seeing the Girolan, I'm gonna yell, to the bow! And I'm gonna sprint. <laughs> that sounds like a nerd. <laughs> it's a big creature. It's tough for this creature to move through some of the Ooh. thicker trees. Ooh! <laughs> 40. Oh, do I see Zafira? And you see Zafira. Oh. <laughs> I see it and she's gonna cast slow. 12. Oh, baby! <laughs> 16 radiant damage. There we go. 12. Oh. Severe. Oh. Oh. Right. Oh. <laughs> like shaking with it, like, I don't know what you Deep breath. Deep breath. <laughs> as soon as it falls. <laughs> I'm so sorry, is everyone all right? I'm so sorry. Safira's ceremony is successful and our friends continue north, spotting a caravan of merchants. They purchase some wares good for combat and are warned of a magical skirmish that occurred east of the road. Two men, orcish blood looked like, both of them. Lobbing flames, conjuring frosts. What was their target? Each other, they well, seemed to be fighting. They were fighting one another? Sure seemed that way, the shorter one seemed like one of his one of his front teeth was a lot shorter than the other. Safe journeys. One of them, I imagine, was Josco. Yes, I assumed yes. as much from the tooth. The other... We think is the other one of you. Has his. the other half of this. So you believe this other half-orc is the other cleric? What is he doing fighting Josco? He's on his way to Finlock Forest. I was trying to deduce how developed he is at this point. It's been so... It's been a week. At least as powerful as me, if not more. Oh, God. With no choice but to press on and hope Josco survived the battle, our friends finally reach Praxis Vomalga, their guide through the Robber Mountains and toward the Cold Light Walker. You were the wizard then. That is me, Praxis. That's right. I'm gonna take you through Osrin's Pass. That should take us to the end of tomorrow. From there we start to climb. We track the beast. We get sight of it. And then I leave you be. We will be requiring a rest soon. Then we rest here. When Graven relieves Erland of his watch, Erland divulges more information about his exchange with Ortiz. The reason I left is because Ortiz believes he has found something that could perhaps free me from Atonement's End and perhaps many others. The recruits to Atonement's End weren't as successful as they wanted them to be. Right. In order to keep that number at 7%, in order to keep the the, the, the the rate of success, they needed to hire better, smarter, stronger recruits. I did, yes, err on my own accord, but I was set up by Atonement's End as a recruit likely to succeed. Orba cares a great deal about me and will risk her life for me if she knows this. Erland instructs Graven to collect information about Mr. Progston, as well as mysterious artisan candles that Atonement send exports, which could be instrumental in the conspiracy. Every step I managed to take away from him, I find myself closer to other divine forces. It does not bode well for a close relationship with Orba. I need you to stay. I'll take the watch from here. Oh, our Goliath friend has the watch currently. He's sitting up where we saw you. Fine. I don't need the rest. Feel free to rest. I did. And that's where we're gonna end for time. Oh my <laughs> Is the group ready to face the cold light walker that lurks in the mountains? Will Erland be able to permanently rid himself of Atonement's End? Which of the two Goliaths will be crowned victorious in this awkward staring contest? Find out next time on Tabletop Notch.